I'm going to go ahead and say Dylan White is the front runner to face AJ in April. I think it's already been said by Eddie Hearn a couple months ago or some weeks ago, whatever it was. But I'm going to reiterate again that I think Dylan White is the front runner because it's a fight that can easily be made. They're both matchroom guys. Dylan White wants a crack at the heavyweight title. He also wants revenge over Joshua. And he also wants these massive paydays to continue. <laughs> so, yeah, I can see Dylan White against Anthony Joshua in April. And Dylan White is a guy who deserves all the money he's made so far. He deserves every bit of adulation that he gets from the fans. He deserves his rankings. He deserves everything, Dylan White. You can't begrudge a guy who's done it the hard way like he has and beaten good men to get into the position that he's in. You can't begrudge him. He deserves everything. But as a fan, as a boxing fan in general, Joshua versus White 2 is not a fight I want to see above Joshua versus Wilder or Joshua versus Fury or even, dare I say it, Joshua versus Miller. These are fights I would rather see before we see the Joshua White rematch. And that's just from a, a boxing fan's perspective. Yeah, again, massive respect to Dylan and what he's done in his career. He deserves all the money he's made and the rankings. He deserves all of that. But just as a boxing fan thinking from an entertainment standpoint, I don't want to see Joshua against Dylan White in April. I'm just, you know. And look, I was somebody who was banging the drum for the first Joshua Dylan White fight. Remember, you go back and watch my videos where I was one of the few people who was saying that Joshua versus Dylan White for the British title was going to be a barn burner. Most people said, ah, it's a garbage fight. Dylan White's rubbish and Joshua's going to blow him out in a couple of rounds. That's what most people were saying. Most people were ridiculing me for looking forward to the Joshua Dylan White fight. I actually went as far as saying that I was looking forward to the Joshua Dylan White fight more than Mayweather versus Pacquiao. Yeah, that video's still up. So, you know, I can't be accused of not rating Dylan or you know, thinking he's not this or not that or trying to begrudge him a payday or begrudge him a title shot or, you know, anything like that. It's not that. It's just from a purely boxing fan standpoint, talking objectively, there are several fights I would rather see Anthony Joshua involved in other than Dylan White. That's just my view. But be that as it may, because of the way the boxing politics has lined up, it looks as though Dylan White is the front runner. Clearly seems to be to me, you know. Uh, and you look at some of the other guys out there, the Jarrell Millers, uh, I mean, some of the other contenders. Those guys are not locked in to long-term contracts with Matchroom and neither is Dylan White, actually. He fights with Matchroom on a fight-by-fight -fight basis. But Dylan White's relationship at this point in his career with Matchroom is so good and his relationship with Sky Sports is so good that why would he go elsewhere even if he's on a fight-by-fight -fight basis with him why would he go elsewhere he's a pay-per-view guy now he just had his first uh pay-per-view as the headline fighter because he did fight a pay-per-view with Joshua in their fight but that was really because of Joshua against Parker it was Dylan White who was the headline name so that was his pay-per-view and his next fight, if it's against Chisora or whoever it is in December, that's also likely to be pay-per-view. So if you're in that situation, even if you're on a fight-by-fight -fight basis, you ain't going to go nowhere. <laughs> as long as you're winning, you ain't going to leave Eddie Hearn. And the reason I say that is because Hearn knows that Dylan White ain't going to go nowhere for now. As long as he's winning. He knows he ain't going to go nowhere because of the money he's making with Sky and with Matchroom. And so therefore... It's less risky, in a sense, to put Dylan White in with Anthony Joshua because it's a win-win for Eddie Hearn because I'm sure there'll be a rematch clause for Joshua if he loses to Dylan White. And I'm sure they could all agree to milk the whole saga, the whole rivalry as much as possible. Dylan White has spoken in the past about having several fights with Anthony Joshua throughout the course of his career, like fighting him three, four times. And Joshua signed to a long-term deal to Matchroom. So that means that Dylan White is going to be associated with Matchroom long-term too. You know, if he 
can, intends to follow through and if it's feasible for him to follow through with this multi-fight situation with Joshua, you know? So, yeah, the point I'm making in a very roundabout way is that somebody like Jarrell Miller is not really tied to matchroom like that. I know he has this little disowned deal for a couple fights, but he's constantly criticizing Eddie Hearn, constantly saying, oh, Hearn talk, says one thing and does the other when it comes to promising me the Joshua fight. So I don't think Miller would be too bothered about leaving matchroom or you know going elsewhere because he's only just hooked up with uh, matchroom. And it's a co-promotional situation. He's not promoted exclusively by matchroom. So, yeah, anyway, long story short, Dylan White to me looks like the front runner, which is a bit disappointing to me. Uh, I'd rather see Joshua in with any number of contenders or champions, obviously, other than Dylan White. But let me know how you guys feel in the comments. I'm out.